Okay, so the, to start this project, uh, first thing you have to do is disassemble the factory infotainment center console screen and uh, the bezel and everything around it. So I just use a, a trim tool, trim removal tool, and pry on the little gauge bezel to pop these clips loose. Once they're loose, you're gonna unplug your seat controls for your heated and ventilated seats. Um, and then you can set this aside. At some point, we're gonna be pulling all these little metal clips off of this to reuse them, and also removing these actual, the controls for the seats out of this to put in the new console. So I'll set that off to the side here. Once you do that, you technically will have four seven millimeter uh, screws. One, two, and then three, four. And you're gonna remove those, so I've already done that actually. And then you can literally just pop this out, just pry, it, pry out on it, and it'll just pop out. There's two clips holding it on, and then behind it are some wiring harnesses. You're just going to disassemble those wiring harnesses, so I'll get that done really quick here. Okay, so I disconnected the three plugs. There's one here, here, and here. It's this guy right here, this gray one, and then that black one right there. So that's all that's holding that on, and then you can actually set this piece to the side as well. So then you're left with this mess, which mine looks probably a little different than most of yours. Um, I have the camera system to my side mirror cameras and then my uh, in-bed camera. And so that's connected to this module right here. However, um, I actually just tried using it and it did not work with this system to turn it on. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that part of it, but I'm still going to show you the rest of this install. Um, I just wanted to give you a heads up on that part. Um, what you're going to do next is you're going to take your main wiring harness, which is, it's this guy right here. And it's not going to have this little red guy clipped to it, but you need to locate that and plug it into this harness first, into that connector. Um, after you do that, it's pretty straightforward. This is your main plug that you're going to be disconnecting this guy right here and plugging in to here and then plugging the male side back into your uh, into your truck. These guys on this side, um, these leftover ones, these are gonna plug in your gray into this guy right here and then you have a black one and that's gonna plug into this one right here. So I'm gonna get that done and then we'll move on from there. Okay, so I've got these connections plugged in on the main harness. Um, I'm just gonna tuck these up out of the way as best as I can for right now. And realistically, um, if you have there, I think it's the IO5 and IO6 uh, uh, stock dash console uh, screen, you can pretty much plug in this unit from here moving forward and it'll actually fire up and work. There's extra controller pieces that it comes with, which are this guy right here, which this is for steering wheel controls. Some of the trucks need to have this harness plugged in, which you'd remove your uh, bezel for your steering wheel. And you just put this inline harness in. Mine doesn't need it since I have that the higher end system. So I'm just gonna set that off to the side. You also have the 4G LTE antennas. There's two of them that you can install those, which I'll get those also installed. Um, and then also you have your, this is for the um, SIM card, if you wanna run the 4G and have connectivity all the time for it. And lastly, this is your GPS antenna. So this is for any of your navigation and your maps and everything. So we'll get that hooked up as well. This guy, this harness is going to be for if you have aftermarket cameras um, and that kind of thing, that'll also plug in. You don't, again, necessarily need this to plug into there if you're not gonna be utilizing any of the connectors on it. Um, I have i don't know that I will plug it in on mine, um, but again, if you aren't adding extra cameras and that kind of thing, you don't really need this harness. So I'm gonna get all of this stuff connected and then we'll uh, resume from there.
Okay, so I realized on that last clip, I forgot to show you exactly where I installed the 4G antennas and the GPS antenna. So I just posted up a picture here, um, just kind of diagramming about where I placed those. So the two 4G antennas, I took the 3M adhesive off and stuck them right on top of the CD player. And then the GPS antenna, same thing, I removed the 3M adhesive and I just stuck it right up on top of that other control box, um, right inside the dashboard. So. That's the best place for them. Um, there's really no specific place you have to put them. Just get them up and inside of the, that area out of the way. Other than that, we can move on to the next step. Okay, so the next thing I've done is I've ran these two wires uh, that are connected to this fiberglass fishing rod. Um, one is for USB um, input to update maps and things like that. The other one is for a SIM card, so you can use the 4G or LTE uh, service if you have an extra SIM card. So I ran those from the glove box and then through the uh, heated seat and ventilated seat kind of button area. And then now I'm gonna untape them and run them back through and up into the main uh, wiring area. So we'll get that done next and then we'll move on. All right, so there are the two wires that I pulled through from the glove box into this main compartment area. So the next thing I'm gonna install um, is going to be the little gear. So that just needs to be also installed inside of here somewhere. I'm gonna try to locate it kind of back there. Um, and then this little pigtail harness is gonna connect into the plug on it. Uh, and then the purple side is gonna plug into the actual monitor itself. So we'll get that ran next and then we'll keep going. All right, so I got that speaker ran, got the little pigtail plugged in and so it's ready to go. All we really have left is to plug the actual uh, screen in and get it all fired up. First thing I got to do though on the back like we had talked about is there's little place holders for those metal clips that came off the original um, bezel. So I'm going to get those moved over to this and then we'll get it all hooked up. All right, so now that we got all the little silver clips on, um, it's time to install all the plugs. And so this is a little bit tight. Um, these cords aren't super long, so I'm just going to show you where each of them go really quick before I actually plug them in. To start with, you need to start with this connector right here, which is actually going to be this blue guy right there. So that's going to plug in there first. Um, then it's going to go, the yellow plug is going to go into this one right here. Then if you want to use the audio or the video output one, the white plug would go right in the middle. Um, and then you would have your blue plug next, which is your um, SIM card slot. And that's going to go on the, the top right there on that far left side. Then on the bottom, you're going to have your purple one, which is the, the speaker, which is this guy right here. Um, then you're going to have the brown connector, which is those two USB inputs for like updating maps and things like that. That goes right here. And then the last one is going to be this black plug, which is your main power plug on the harness. And that goes into this one. Um, these two right here are for your two 4G antennas, and it's, it doesn't really matter which one gets plugged onto which um, port, they're both the same thing. So uh, those are gonna be on there. And then uh, other than that, you're gonna have your last one, which is your satellite antenna, and that plugs in right there. So we're gonna get this all connected and then we'll fire it up. All right. So I got all of the connections connected. It's kind of a mess in here, but we're just gonna tuck these wires back in here uh, and then get this installed. Um, the last thing we have to do is I'm just gonna pull these harnesses out the little holes right there. And then um, I already pulled the buttons out of my old gauge bezel or the uh, trim piece. And then we're just gonna plug them back in. So I'm gonna get that done next. All right, so we got it all put together. So uh, I'm gonna just fire this up really quick here and we'll see how it does. No, 
there it is. Uh, figure out how to turn my air down here. Turn off this light as well. Seems like the uh, radio is working. Looks like a pretty clean install. I don't know anything really about setting everything up, so I'm gonna go through that and then um, come back with a update on this video in some settings. Hey guys, so it's the next day. Um, I just wanted to give myself last night to get everything kind of set up in the menus and get everything, my phone synced to it, all of that stuff before I went ahead and did this review. So I think we're pretty much there. There may be a few things that I'm missing, but I don't think it's gonna affect the overall review. So to kind of jump into it, uh, first impressions of this, the build quality is really good. Uh, it has a really nice screen. The processing speed of it is very fast. I'm definitely blown away by how fast it is actually. To dive into it, um, right now this is the Apple interface for it. If you want to go to the regular interface, you just hit the home button. Um, if you want to go to the normal console area of what our screens used to look like, you just hit that console button and it takes you to it. Um, I'm going to show you, I'll throw it in reverse really quick, just so you can see the backup camera. The cool thing is, is it has this little area, which is utilizing our parking sensors. So that's kind of a neat little feature right there. Backup camera, we all know they're not the greatest um, in these trucks, but it's not any worse. It's on a bigger screen. So I think that does make a little bit of a difference there. Put it back in park here. All right, and then if you want to get back to the just the main menu, you can either hit the back button or the home button. Um, this is just the standard interface. And then if you want to do your Apple CarPlay, you just hit that button up. Oh, sorry, let me go back. You just hit that button up there and that'll start up your Apple CarPlay. Uh, I'm going to come back here. So another thing that's really cool about this is it has built-in navigation. That's what your GPS antenna is that you installed. Um, the map's really clear, very fast. You can zip, you know, pinch to zoom. It renders really, really quick. So that's, you know, maps, you can put in whatever destinations you want, all of that stuff. Um, it has your browser. So overall, this is a really super snappy tablet. I'm super impressed with it. I thought it was gonna have some lag for being, you know, Android based. I'm an Apple fan to my core, so uh, having something Android definitely is out of the ordinary for me, but i uh, pleasantly surprised. Um, kind of to move on, we've got, um, you know, you got your video options, Prime Video, um, it loads. Let me put this in really quick. It loads videos <laughs> pretty quick, if I can get the password in. And this, you can watch videos while you're in motion, which is a huge benefit. Um, but that's another kind of cool feature. We'll go back from there. Um, I did know that Netflix is not an option for um, the Play Store. So I ended up having to go to, I think it's called APK Mirror and download the an older version of the Netflix file or the Netflix uh, app to be able to play it here. But um, once it was downloaded, everything, same thing, it all works the same. Uh, it plays great. So that's another one that there are some files that you might not be able to download here, but you can always, again, being Android, and it's one thing that Apple has a flaw of is you have the option to be able to do things like that with downloading um, different apps and stuff and still being able to utilize them. So uh, what else is there? AC, we'll go to the AC controls. This is just kind of the normal climate thing that they offer. Everything is, you know, is touch control. You can set it to dual. You can um, adjust it, you know, side by side if you want to. Turn your air up or down. Um, 
all of my heated seats, everything, and cooled seats, they all work really well. So overall, very clean install. Um, something else is the lighting, and I think you can see it, I just turned it on. So you can actually change all of your lighting to whatever color you want. These are all RGB color coded, so you can program them um, and adjust it to whatever, you know, color that you want to do it but kind of another nice little feature about it that you can match it with the rest of your dash and interior all right so the last part of this video um, I want to go over is I've I posted some pictures of the install last night and a bunch of people just inquired with a ton of questions on the L5P pages so I figured I'd try to answer as many of those as I could really quick here. So let me uh, pull this up really fast and we'll kind of go through some of these. So first off, how, how expensive was it? Again, I paid around 1100 bucks for it. I didn't get any discounts or anything like that. I paid full price. I'm not endorsed endorsed by it or they're not paying me to, to do a review or anything. I figured I'd do this for all you guys in the uh, L5P world. Um, thinking about getting the... Uh, the screen wondering about the piano black or the silver which would look better honestly i went with the piano black i think it's going to match better because there's two different versions of this this silver um trim and i don't know which one it matched closer to it's hard to tell from the picture so i just opted to go with the uh the piano black um have a camera the camera system for the cargo cam and the mirror cams i think i already answered that but um yeah unfortunately this does not work with that system you just you go back to the console hold the back button and it would pop the menu up but as you can see it does not do anything so unfortunately the IntelliHall system, which I also have that, does not work with this. There are those um, camera plugins on that white plug on the back of this that you could add different cameras and maybe make that work somehow. But as of right now, I don't know of a workaround to to get the cargo cameras and you know side mirror cameras working. So um, let's see here. Do all the steering wheel buttons work? Yes, they all. They all still work. Uh, let's see here. Let me get back to, um, this will be easier. Switch radio stations. Yep, they all they all work, including these buttons. But yeah, the steering wheel buttons do function on this. Um, let's see here. Lots of funny things. Please release my people from the shackles of wanting these big ass TVs in their trucks. Yeah, I'm used to big screens. I have two Teslas over there that have big screens on them. So I love I love big screens and big technology in, in my vehicles. Um, if I knew what my auto sync was capable, compatible, he would get this. So um, Ben Tyler is actually sending me an auto sync to try on this. It sounds like there's a pretty good shot that it is going to work. So as soon as I get that, I will report back to everyone to uh, let you know if auto sync does in fact work on this. Um, they don't have any for 19 to 22 yet. Um, the 19s, yes, it looks like you can get them for 19s because our consoles are the same our infotainment centers are the same in the 19s 20 20 and up uh l5ps unfortunately you're out of luck at this point or for now um so hopefully they do release something like that for you guys as well um let's see here does the tailgate backup cam work yep i showed you that earlier um how long did it take to get it since i ordered so i ordered it it took about a week and a half once I placed the order for them to process it. Then they shipped it. FedEx um, 
from China and I got it in four days. So that was real fast shipping in fr from FedEx. I feel like I've gotten Amazon Prime packages that have taken easily three times as long uh, to get to me. So FedEx was on point with this situation. Um, what's the boot time like? The initial boot time takes a little bit, um, but once it's all programmed and everything, it's pretty instant. It's only a matter of a couple seconds for it to fire up. Uh, let's see here. Can you post some pictures in the daylight to see the trim a little bit better? Here's the trim. Just so you can kind of see the way it looks. I have it kind of paired up all. I turned off my headlights, but um, all kind of matching my screens and whatnot. So it just kind of matches together. But uh, did you use the factory Wi-Fi connection? No, I did not use the factory Wi-Fi connection. This does easily connect to um, to Wi-Fi through this menu right here, network. You just turn it on and I have a few of my networks saved, but um, here, we'll just click my home network. So connect. So you can connect to your home internet or you could connect and tether to your Wi-Fi hotspot on your phone with it. I'm not sure what's going on with the, oh, there we go. Of course, so now it's connected. So if we wanted, again, if we wanted to go back and, um, you know, watch a video or whatnot, it should automatically fire up now that it's connected to the internet. Uh, what else is there? Where's the YouTube video? I'm recording it right now for you guys. Um, all right, let me go to the other page that I have this posted on and just kind of see if there's any additional comments there and then we'll kind of we'll wrap this video up here. Which which one is this? This is manufactured by Autotech uh, Pro. I'll put a link in the description of this video of where you can find it at. How hard was the install? Uh, install it took me about an hour and a half total, but that was including shooting some video footage of me, you know, doing the install. So realistically, I could have knocked this out probably probably in about 45 minutes. Um, really, really easy, all plug and play, nothing super complicated. Um, steering wheel buttons, yeah, they work. Um, what else is there? How do the cameras look? I showed you that again, rear view camera. Looks about the same as the normal crappy camera. So lots of 2020 questions asking if they make it for the 2020. Sorry guys. Hopefully this company uh, gets the message and starts working on that, that for you guys. I have the factory drop down roof DVD player. Will it still work? Um, there's an option when you're selecting what model you have and what unit you have for your stock console that asks if you have the rear infotainment. So I believe if you select the right option, you will be able to um, utilize your uh, rear entertainment stuff. Does the brightness still work for the roll switch on the left side? I don't know. Let's find out. Hard to tell in the daytime. I don't think it does though. Everything else works on my truck, but I don't think, I mean, I think you can see, I don't even know if you can see that, but I'll have to maybe test it again at night and just see if it, it actually does dim still. So how do you change the truck settings now? Um, everything is done through the app. Same way you'd, you'd change the truck settings, you know, where on your own, you just go back to this part of it um, we can go to the home button and then you can change all your truck settings through right there same thing as you always have had 
I think that's about it. So I, if you guys have any other questions, uh, post them in the comments below or hit me up on Facebook on the L5P page. I'm more than happy to answer them or test out my screen to get you an answer if I don't have it. So other than that, if you, if you find this video informative, if you don't mind, give it a like, subscribe to my channel, um, leave a comment for me again. If you have any questions, I'm more than happy to answer them for you guys. So we'll see you on the next video.